You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. I'm making bolty pies today, and even though this delicacy is popular amongst your typically emotionally restrained working-class football fan, I'm not ashamed to say that I had a little cry while I was making this video, but more on that later. And making these bolty pies is much like building a successful football team. The strong spine is the pastry that I'm making here. I started with 400 grams of all-purpose flour, to which I added a teaspoon of salt and a pinch of pepper, a teaspoon each of dried thyme and oregano, and I'm also going in with a teaspoon of baking soda as the increased pH level helps the pastry brown a little better. But that's just my preference, you can leave it out. And 200 grams of butter. And instead of mixing this all together with my hands, I use a kitchen machine to blend everything together to the texture of fine breadcrumbs. And the difference between making your own pastry and buying ready-made pastry is kind of like the difference between signing Roy Keane to patrol your central midfield and... Ali Deer, who famously played in the English Premier League, after somehow convincing Southampton manager Graeme Sooners that he was George Weir's cousin. Nothing against Graeme Sooners, I mean, I really enjoyed his turn in Boys from the Black stuff. As you can see, I'm going in with two eggs and a little splash of milk, and I'm going to blend the wet ingredients into the dry very, very slowly, and homemade pastry is proper honest food, you know, like the central defender with a bad haircut and a broken nose who puts his body on the line. Not your fake garbage like Carlos Kaiser, the greatest footballer ever to play football. And his is a pretty intriguing story, actually. And there are some links in the description below if you want to find out more about him. I'm giving this dough a little knead now just to bring it together. But I don't want to work it too much before wrapping it in cling film and chilling in the fridge for at least half an hour. And this will just allow the gluten to relax and will ensure that we don't get any pastry shrinkage when the bolty pies hit the oven and while the pastry is having a half-time orange we can prepare the bolty curry pie filling the real heartbeat of our team needs a few key ingredients to give a good balance and we also need the right tactics when making the bolty and i do have a bolty chicken curry video that you can check out and there's a link above for that and below in the comments and description but you are free to fill these pies any way you like because we all have different philosophies on how this game should be played, I suppose. I'm more Pep Guardiola than Sam Allardyce, but it's up to you. And the bolty filling works particularly well in a pie because it's not a very saucy curry. And it's cooked in a sort of a quick stir-fry kind of style. But one thing you do absolutely have to make sure of is that the final curry has the right texture. And you can see here, as I run my spoon through the curry sauce, it kind of holds its shape. And that's right now, so that can be left to cool fully. And the pastry is back out for the second half and can now be portioned up. I'm making four individual bolty pies here. So first I'll cut the pastry disc into four. And the pie dishes I'm using will fit this recipe perfectly. And just to give you an idea of the amounts I'm working with, each of these pie dishes holds 300 millilitres of water. So that gives you kind of an idea of the volume of the pie as it relates to the ingredient amounts I'm using. And I split each of those four pieces into two to give me a base and a lid. I'm just gathering them together to make them easy to roll out. And I'm going to roll out my pastry about three or four millimetres thick, really. And as I'm rolling, I'll make sure I have enough flour on the surface there to prevent sticking. And every now and again, I'll flip the pastry and give it a quarter turn and keep rolling until I reach my desired thickness and size, which I can check by bringing in my pie dish and sort of gathering up the rolled out pastry to check it will adequately line my dish before plonking it in and forming it. And this looks a lot harder than it is, to be honest. The pastry's pretty forgiving, and even if it tears or breaks up, you can just smush it back together and make sure you spend a little bit of time getting this right. You can see I'm pressing down firmly at the bottom especially to make sure there are no air holes lurking down there and some bakers will flamboyantly slice the pastry with a sharp knife now but I just trim it with a pair of scissors because that's probably the easiest way and while I've been doing this pastry and now I'm just tidying it up a little bit the bolty has been cooling fully and can be simply spooned in and after each spoonful make sure to press down so there are no gaps in the final pie my trophy there for winning the league championship with my school football team. Probably my proudest achievement since I was born in a hospital that no longer exists. Of course, I lived in a street that no longer exists. And this trophy was won playing in a league that no longer exists, in a unitary authority that no longer exists, 
for a school that no longer exists. Post-industrial redevelopment is so exquisitely tragic, it's almost beautiful. And if those images don't bring a tear to your eye like they did with me, you're either dead inside or just not as emotionally invested as I am. I'm bringing in two beaten egg yolks and a splash of milk, and I'm going to use this to first brush the top of my pastry here to facilitate the gluing down of the incoming pastry lid. And this egg milk mixture will also be used to glaze the top of the final pie. So let's get the lid in first. This needs to be pressed down firmly, but. You have to be careful not to get any bubbles in the top there, and if you do find one, just lift the pastry and let the air out before pressing down firmly again. And now we've let the farts out of the top and everything's looking ship-shape, we can trim the edges with scissors again. And we have our trusty spine, and we've got a good balance of ingredients in the middle of the park. We now need our flare, which begins with a good brushing of our egg yolk glaze, and this will give the pies a lovely deep golden colour. And now once the pies had one glaze, if you feel inclined, you can add any pastry effects to the top where they will stick to that glaze. And that's handy because once that first glaze is tacky, you want to glaze a second time to cover any pastry effects and also to really help achieve the sure stopper appearance of your final pie. And you might have noticed that I waited until the second glaze was on to press around the edges with a fork to make sure everything is sealed. And it's much better to do the pressing after the glaze to ensure those fork indentations are properly covered with the egg wash. I shall repeat the glazing process here. As for me, it's the most satisfying aspect of making these bolty pies, and I always think the pastry effects added on at the end take the pies to a new level, and this lettering is very delicate, so I did freeze it first to make it easier to manipulate. I do have one last task to perform before the pies go in the oven, and that is to pierce a couple of holes in the top of the pastry to allow the steam to escape during their time in a preheated oven set to 180 degrees Celsius with the fan on, and that's around 360 Fahrenheit or so, where they should take around 30 minutes to turn a deep golden brown colour, just like this, and I think some close-ups are definitely in order here, because these pies look spectacular, and I just absolutely cannot wait for these to cool a little so I can dive in. You should always let the pies cool for at least 20 minutes before attempting to remove from the dishes here and you can see that that pastry has cooked perfectly and is dry and crisp and the baking soda we added has helped the pastry turn a deep golden brown colour underneath as well as on top and you definitely want to see how these look inside so after cooling a little more I shall carefully cut this one open for you to reveal the succulent spicy balty interior and even though I was a little misty eyed earlier I can report that eating these pies made me feel a whole lot better about large portions of my life being erased by time. I'll see you next time, eh? Sarah.